Okay, so this is about simplifying fractions. I know this is an issue with quite a few of the students. Um, fractions tend to be much scarier than they need to be um, for most people. So this fraction that they're giving us here, 30, or sorry, 12 over 32. So fractions, this is like, um, and I'm not sure why you would divide it up this many times, but if you had a piece of pizza, um, so if you think of pizza, this is how many slices you could have. 32. You chopped that pizza up into 32 pieces. What the top number tells you is how many you do have. I have 12. I could have had 32, but I guess the rest of them must have been eaten. Somebody ate 20 pieces. Um, I think of a pizza because that's a normal way we cut up a pizza. It's kind of um, the way we picture fractions. That is a whole lot of pieces. Um, teeny little slices. No wonder you ate 20 of them. Um, so remember the bottom number is how many you can have in a whole um, piece, like a whole pizza. And the top number is what you do have left or how many you currently have. So I could, I started with 32, now I have 12, something along those lines. Which is why you can't have zero on the bottom of a fraction. Because if we think of it that way, I can't start with zero pieces and now I have 12. Where did they come from? That doesn't make any sense. So that's part of the reason we don't have zero. Sorry, that eraser is way too big. Okay, the other thing is that for whatever reason, it confuses people that a fraction is simply division. So if you think of a fraction symbol, and Miss TD taught me this one, and I really do like it. So if you look at this one, a division symbol looks just like a fraction. So I'm going to write this right on top of that one. So if you think of that as the division symbol, sometimes that does help students remember it's just division. That's all it means is we're dividing. So that's why we can also write this as 12 divided by 32. Oops, I almost wrote that backwards. 12 divided by 32. Um, or I've even seen it written with a slash like this. This means the same thing. It just depends on the computer and how it's being typed in. Sometimes it'll be a slash like that instead of a division symbol or um, the kind of nice looking fraction at the top that's what they did first here. Aiden, please stop. Go ask dad. Go ask dad. Okay, so um, now that we've kind of gone over a few of these um, basics of fractions, to simplify a fraction, really all we need to do is know, we're, we're trying to figure out what can we reduce it by. Um, in this case, they saw right away you can divide both of these numbers by 4, and that got them to the end result of 3 over 8. If you didn't see right away they can divide by 4, um, you can start off with um, the basic numbers. So I always have them written out over on the side, something like this, and I just go through my numbers. So can it divide by 2? And if they're even, so if they end in 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and by 10 I mean 0, then they can divide by 2. Super easy that way, right? I'm sorry, that was supposed to be an equal sign. So in this case, um, I would get 6 because I'm doing 12 divided by 2. 32 divided by 2, I would get 16. So they're still both even. I'm going to write it down here. So I can divide by 2 again. So I go 3, and then I go 8. If you notice, I got the exact same answer they did. I just had to do one extra step. Um, so if you go through, so if it's even, it can divide by 2, 4, 6, 8. So that's kind of... a a good rule there. If it's not an even number, you can cross all those off. It can't divide by those. Um, a way to know if it can divide by 3 is if you look at the digits and you say um, say 1 and 2. If I add 1 and 2 together, I get 3. 3 can divide by 3, which means 12 can divide by 3. So if I apply that same thing to 32, I go 3 plus 2, I get 5. 
5 can't divide by 3, so 32 can't divide by 3. It's kind of a weird way to see if you can divide by 3. That same thing works with 9. The number that you get at the end just has to be able to divide by 9 instead of 3. Um, kind of a, a neat way to know that one. Um, for 5s, the number has to end in 0 or 5 in order for it to be divisible by 5. Um, 6, like I said, it has to be even. Um, I kind of skipped over 4 also. They both have to be even in order for it to divide. Um, for 6, if you can't divide by 2 or 3, you can't divide by 6. So if you've already crossed off 2 and 3, cross off 6. 7 doesn't have its own rule. You just have to divide and see. Um, 8 is another one of those even ones, and then 9 we just talked about. Same thing as this 3's trick. If you add it up and you get 9, um, or a number divide that can divide by 9, then you can do that. So these are all just little simple tricks to get you um, through it a little bit quicker as far as dividing. Um, all right, so let's actually start this. All right, so we have 21 over 35. So what can they both divide by? So if we go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Whoa, that's a very weird 9. 9. All right. So we want to figure out what these both can divide by. And these are both odd. 1 and 5, those are both odds. What that tells me right away is it cannot be 2, it cannot be 4, it cannot be 6, it cannot be 8. I cannot divide by any of those numbers because these are odd. So I have... I, I've crossed off quite a bit of my list here. So my first one would be 3 that I'd want to try. So if I use my little trick that I just showed you on the last page and I go 2 plus 1, I get 3. Well, 3 can divide by 3, so I know 21 is okay. And then 35, if I go 3 plus 5, I get 8. 8 can not divide by 3, so that tells me right away that 35 cannot divide by 3. If you weren't sure, you would just try it out. Would you you'd get a decimal, and then that would tell you, nope, that's not the right one. I need to try a different number. So I'm going to go ahead and cross off 3. I know it won't work. 5. 35 ends in a 5. That can divide by 5, but 21 does not. It has to be a 5 or a 0 in order to divide by 5. All right, 7. 7 is one of those ones we just have to try it. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm going to go like this, divide by 7, divide by 7. So 21, if I divide that by 7, I get 3. 35, if I divide by 7, I get 5. Oh, look at that, it worked. And now 3 and 5, they're actually um, two of my prime numbers. And prime numbers, that's another list that you may want to have available. Um, just so that you know, once you get down to prime numbers, those, what that means is it's a number that can only divide by itself in 1. So 3 and 5 can't reduce anymore. I know that is my answer. So 3 and 5. Check. Yay. All right, next. I'm going to go ahead and erase. I'm going to try to only erase. Oh, no, I'm going to erase these because I crossed them off. Okay. So I have 9 over 36. All right, so I have 2, 3, 4, Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so 36 is even, but 9 is not even. And I apologize, that is kind of a funny look at 9, but that is a 9. So since they're both not even, I can cross off these numbers. I know they won't work. So 3, I know 9 can divide by 3. How about 36? If I say 3 plus 6, I get 9. And we just said 9 can divide by 3, so I know the whole number 36 can divide by 3. Again, that's just a quick 3's trick. If, you, if that's difficult to remember or you don't really understand, you can always just divide it and test it to see if it'll work. So you go, I know 9 divided by 3 is 3. 36 divided by 3, so I can kind of do this mental math. I know 3 divided by 3 is 1. There's nothing left over. 6 divided by 3 is 2. All right, so I'm going to bring it down here, 3 and 12. Um, so we need to make sure that this is, in fact, done. So I know 3 can divide by 3 again. And then 12, can that divide by 3? If I go 1 plus 2, I get 3. 
three can divide by three, so that means 12 can. Again, if, if, you, if that rule is not making your brain happy, just um, ignore that rule and just test it out. Three divided by three is one, 12 divided by three is four. So we get one and then I'm hitting the fraction bar, four. Um, so this first fraction bar is just for if you have um, a basic fraction um, and this other fraction bar has that other box in front of it as for if you end up with a whole number. So if we do end up with an answer with it that's an improper fraction, meaning that the numerator top number is bigger than the denominator, um, which is the bottom number, we have to turn it into a mixed fraction. If they give you the options, um, especially if they're saying simplest form here, they're going to want you to convert it. Um, it may even give you a warning the first time. After it gives you that warning, though, it'll start to mark you wrong. All right, so we should make it to go. Yay, we finished.